Before use, perform the pre-operation inspection as described in the owner's manual. Read, understand, and follow all of the instructions, warnings, and safety precautions in the owner's manual and on all product labels. Before beginning, ensure the pressure washer is on a flat level surface in a well-ventilated area. Then perform a visual inspection of the pressure washer, looking for debris, leaks, and worn components that may impair its operation. Keep all flammable materials at least five feet away from all sides of the pressure washer. The engine is shipped from the factory without oil. Fill the engine with the provided engine oil. Running the engine without oil will result in severe damage and void the warranty. To check the oil level, unscrew the engine oil dipstick and pull it out. Then wipe the dipstick clean with a shop towel. Next, place a clean dipstick into the filler neck, but do not thread it in. Leave it rest on the filler neck. After this, remove the dipstick and check the oil level. The oil level should be at the upper oil limit on the dipstick. If the level is low, add Polaris small engine oil to the crankcase until the level reaches the upper limit on the dipstick. Do not overfill. Then reinstall the dipstick and tighten the cap. Now clean any residual oil off the pressure washer. Next, check the fuel level by removing the fuel tank cap and fill the tank if levels are low. Do not fill the fuel tank above the maximum fuel level to allow room for fuel expansion. Next, start by connecting the hoses. Verify the inlet screen is free of any dirt or debris and is in place with the convex side facing out. Then turn on the water supply and run for 30 seconds to purge any debris from the supply hose. Next, turn off the water supply and thread the water supply hose into the pump inlet. Then, thread the high-pressure hose onto the pump outlet. Next, thread the high-pressure hose onto the spray gun. To purge the air from the pump, begin by connecting all the hoses and then turn on the cold water source. Next, aim the spray gun in a safe direction and squeeze and hold the trigger for at least 30 seconds or until the water runs steady and all the air is purged from the pump and hoses. Then, check the hoses and connections for leaks. If leaks are found, turn off the machine, aim the spray gun in a safe direction, and squeeze the trigger to relieve any built-up pressure in the system. Never attempt to touch a leak in a high-pressure hose or fitting, and never attempt to repair a high-pressure hose. Now, engage the trigger lock. Before installing any nozzles, the nozzles supplied with the pressure washer have specific spray patterns designed to clean different surfaces. Using the incorrect nozzle can damage surfaces. To place a nozzle into the spray wand, pull the quick connect coupler back, insert the nozzle, then release the coupler, allowing it to snap back into place. Once installed, pull on the nozzle to make sure it is secure. If the engine is running, Always make sure the trigger lock is in the locked position before removing and installing the nozzles. To use chemicals with your pressure washer, begin by attaching the open end of the soap hose to the barbed fitting on the pump. Next, place the filtered end of the soap hose into the chemical container. Then, insert the black nozzle into the spray wand. Soaps will not siphon if the black soap nozzle is not installed on the spray wand. Next, after using soap, place the filtered end of the soap hose into a container of clean water and run the pressure washer drawing clean water through the hose and pump until the system is thoroughly rinsed. Pump damage from soap or chemical residue is not covered under warranty. To start the engine, make sure your water source is connected, turned on, any air is purged from the system, and the trigger lock is placed in the locked position. Now, to start the engine, begin by turning the engine switch to the on position. Next, slide the fuel valve to the on position. Then slide the throttle to the run position. Now, slide the choke to the choke position if starting a cold engine, or slide to run for a warm engine. Next, pull the recoil slowly until resistance is felt 
then pull rapidly to start the engine. Once the engine starts, slowly move the choke lever to run. If the engine sputters, move the choke toward choke until the engine is warmed up. Running the pressure washer for more than two minutes without the spray gun trigger pulled will overheat the pump and could possibly cause damage. The thermal relief valve will open and spray water to help cool the pump as it overheats. To avoid overheating the pump, shut the engine off if not being used for longer than two minutes. To shut off your pressure washer engine, begin by setting the trigger lock on the spray gun. Then slide the throttle to the slow position, if equipped. Next, turn the engine switch to the off position. Now, turn off the water supply. Then, release the trigger lock and squeeze the spray gun trigger to relieve the pressure in the hose and pump. Next, allow the engine to cool completely before handling and storage. For more information, see your authorized Polaris dealer or visit polarispower.com.